And then we're going to move towards uh, some applications for um, vectors. So when we talk about lines and planes, we talked about lines in two dimensions, but we also, I don't know if I mentioned lines in 3D as well. Um, and I think the lines that we talked about are all lines that came from the origin. But what I could do is, what we could do is we can take a line and move it out of the origin and then try to draw a line that way. So we'll start with the idea of a parametric um, equation of a line. <clears throat> and we'll start off in 2D where Let's say I want a line that goes through this point, and I'll call this a point P, but we can also consider this as a vector, right? A point here is like a vector from in standard position from the origin to that point. So I'll put an arrow on top to say this is a point, but also as a vector. And then let's say I want it to go a specific direction and I'll draw the direction vector from that point and I'll call it V. So if you want or if you feel more comfortable maybe we can put the P over here. This is your P vector and then this is your V vector and if I want the equation of this line, the parametric equation of this line, we can think about this as a scalar. We talked about lines as a scalar multiplication, but we're restricted with lines just uh, at the origin. So if we're not at the origin anymore, we have a starting point P. Maybe if we need to add that P from the beginning, so this line vector L can be described as a, as a function of T, a parameterized function of T, where we would say this is going to be uh, the P vector. So first let's go to that point, and then let's do a scalar multiplication on V by adding it. So So this is your, your um, equation, your vector equation, okay? Now a vector equation, vector has components and so if we take a look at inside of the components. Um, let's say P was equal to uh, AB or something and then V was equal to, let's just call it V1, V2 where AB and then V1, V2 are all scalars then we can break this up to two different components if we do the addition and scalar multiplication we have A plus T times V1 and then B plus T times V2 as a two-dimensional row vector that would represent the X and the Y components. So from here, you can say X is equal to A plus T V1 and Y is equal to B plus T V2. And so this set is called a parametric equation, the, par the parametric equation. Parametric equations that describe that line. And then if we want to give this a name, this is a in vector form. Okay. Any questions? Yes. 
A uh, vector could be in any number of dimensions. So, in fact, I was going to go to R3 in three dimensions and just say it'll look like this, except it'll have three components. So, I'll say that now. In 3D, your line can also be described as P, the point, plus T times a direction vector V, where V is your direction vector. And then this, this would work the same way in R3. In fact, it'll work in R4, R5, but again, we can't visualize it because that's too many dimensions. Or the 3D would be XYZ. XYZ, right. So I would call it ABC probably, yeah? <coughs> and then V1, V2, V3. And so your X is equal to A plus T V1. Y is equal to A plus T V2. And Z is equal, um, that's B, A, B, C. <coughs> B and then C plus T times V3. Okay. Questions? Want a visual? Or are you good with this? I'm good with it. Yeah. P is the point. So L of T is the name of the function of the line, and T is your independent variable, your parameter. Okay. Are we good? This one? Well, the red or the purple one, they're, it's the same thing depending on how you graph it. So this is just one form of the line. This is another form of the line. And if we piece this together and do the y equals mx plus b business, because we can in two dimensions, then we'll have another form of the line. Uh, y, the, what is it, slope intercept form or standard form or something like that. So those are just different ways to write the same line. Okay? So the idea behind these parametric equations is to go to the point and then you take the vector in the direction that you're going and then you stretch it out, right? You stretch it out, you go backwards. That's what the t times v is doing. It's stretching the in the v direction. Except instead of start starting at the origin, it's starting at some other point. So that's the only difference between what we did last time and what we're doing today. Okay? <laughs> you guys don't look like you're convinced. Is it Is it okay, really? Or Oh man, I can't get it. <laughs> Cuz I want to try to explain if you can't get it. Otherwise, we move on and everything else is going to be harder anyways. So all right, let's move on. <coughs> so my one parameter t, this is a line, has one parameter. And the parameter that we usually use here is t. As you can see, the t, and there's a t there, and and so we have one parameter. Now imagine, and for us, let's go to three dimensions here. 
Imagine that we have two parameters. I wonder how that's going to look like. So I'm going to attempt, attempt to draw this in 3D. Now let's type, let me title it first, two parameters in 3D. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to draw three-dimensional space, some random point that I'm going to select here in three-dimensional space. I'll call it P. And then I'll say, uh, I'll stretch this into one direction, V. And then if I do that, this is going to be incomplete right now, but mm -hmm. I'm going to write down uh, P plus T times V is going to be a line that goes like that, right? And we already said that if we have a, a form like this with one parameter, uh, that's just going to be a line. Now, what if I have another vector, U? So P plus, uh, I'm going to use another letter S. P plus S times U is going to be a line passing through P going in the direction of U. Are we good with that? Now, what if I put this together, P plus TV plus SU? So, let's say S was equal to zero, I'll have P plus TV. Right? And we said P plus TV was this line right here. What if S was equal to 1? I'll have P plus TV plus U. That's like saying P plus U plus TV. So TV is this uh, line segment in red, right? So if if I have P plus U plus TV, I'll go from P to U, and then I'll have that line TV on it. Right? So this would be the line segment P plus U plus TV. Yeah. It's it's exactly parallel to this this red line. Okay. Doesn't look parallel, huh? It is. Okay. Yeah. They're 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 called parameters. Right now we can think about it as random numbers. They're scalars. They're just any real number. But what we're gonna say is that they're gonna be real numbers from are they the, the slope No. No. The slope it, so what I'm what we're create so one more thing to, to think about in, in R three the idea of slope is low a lot more complicated than in R2 in, in just two dimensions. So we won't talk about slopes and, and T and S are not slopes. Okay? All right. 
So when s is when s is equal to one, I have p plus u, and then plus t v. When s is equal to two, this is two u. That would bring me over here. So I'll start with p and then two u and then another line TV that's parallel to the original red line. And then if S was negative one, I would go P and then negative U, so that goes backwards, and then I would have another line like this. Do you see what's happening? I'm kind of creating these parallel lines, these lines parallel to this red line uh, up along the U vector. All right, so now let's look at it from the other way. What if uh, T was equal to one? I'll have P plus one times V, and then I'll have SU, which is a line parallel to SU. So I'm going to draw that here. P plus V, because v, uh, T is equal to 1, plus SU. And if I let S go all the way from whatever to whatever, minus infinity to infinity, then I'll have all that range. So guess what I have? If I let T and S just go from minus infinity to infinity, we have a plane. Can you see that plane? That looks pretty cool, huh? Yeah, not so much. Okay. So what we have here, if we call it P, I, I, no, not P, I need another name, L, R, let's call it R, R, now this has two variables, S and T, this would be a parametric equation of the plane. And then the idea of we have two parameters, uh, you get a plane. If you have one parameter, you're, you're spanning a line. If you have two parameters, you're spanning a plane. And you would guess that if you have three parameters, you would span a space. Okay, so that means I can get to any point on this plane by just finding an appropriate value for uh, for s and t. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, good enough. Is it clear? Crystal? Foggy? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so parametric equations, uh, this is, I, actually, I guess this would be called a vector equation. If you were to break this up to different components, then it would be more parametric. So let's, uh, parametric just means it has a T in it. So whether it's written into different uh, X, Ys, and Zs, or just in vector form, then it's still kind of called parametric. I, I don't know if I, I think, yeah, I made the distinction in the previous page. Um, no, no. It'll, it'll end up looking like a vector. So if, if P, yeah, if P was A, B, C again, plus T times V, which is, we'll call V1, V2, and V3, 
plus S times dub, uh, U, U1, U2, U3. Then this would be like your X, your Y, and your Z components, and then you can just break that up. So X is equal to A plus T V1 plus S U1. Y would be B plus T V2 plus S U2. And then Z would equal to C plus T V3 plus S U3. Okay? Well, this this uh, this notation that I use here is more like a, it, it means it's a function that uses two variables, and the two variables that we're using are the parameters. Okay, so that's your. I guess formally, this is your parametric equation. This would be your vector form. <coughs> All right. So if you just remember, uh, if for some reason we're working on some stuff and then you generate something that has one parameter, then think about it as a line. If you generate something that has two parameters, think of it as a plane. And then if there are more parameters, it would be a space or a four-dimensional space or whatever. Okay, so that might come up later on. <coughs> uh, I have a summary of definitions from the book. that I'll just copy and paste onto our notes. <clears throat> and uh, we talked about the normal form and the vector, and we just, uh, I guess last time we talked about the normal form, normal uh, meaning perpendicular because it's defined by a perpendicular vector. And then the vector form we just talked about right now. Although I don't see the vector form of uh, the plane here. Ah, maybe I didn't need to talk about that. No, it is important that I talk about it because it'll come up later on. <coughs> All right. So you have some uh, interesting problems in, in the book or in your homework about uh, lines and planes and so if you've taken uh, Calc 3, then that should be fairly easy for you. If you hadn't, then you might struggle a little bit, but I think you can find all the answers in the book somehow. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, the next, the next uh, section is the applications of vectors. So let's talk about vector applications. Um, <coughs> there are some simple vector addition applications, which would be something that you would learn in physics like the addition of like the plane and the headwind and stuff like that. Uh, but let's let's take a look at some other applications that might use uh, some of the modulus stuff that we were doing. Do I have it? Wow, I don't have notes on that. <laughs> Maybe we don't have to talk about it. Yep, my notes are just finished. Well, before we talk about that, let's take a look at, uh, uh, I don't know if people have noticed. But in your home page, there's a worksheet. So the worksheet is available. Uh, Jose was asking when it was due. I think it'll be due uh, a week from today. And the idea is that for you to, to submit it online here. So I want you to, to answer the questions using um, a computer and then type your answers and then test your answers and see. So this is going to force you to use a program that is uh, pretty much like MATLAB. And if you're going to be a computer person, 
you probably won't be using MATLAB that much, but uh, if you're going to be an engineer or anything else uh, related, uh, MATLAB is going to be an important part of your of your uh, applied career. So uh, I thought maybe it might be good practice to, to use uh, MATLAB or something like that. So if you have MATLAB, you can do this in MATLAB. If you don't have MATLAB, uh, I don't want you to have to pay for more stuff, so uh, uh, free mat is a free version of MATLAB that you can download. When you download it, just be careful. It's, it, it has uh, the automatic, the, the default download, I think, is, is assuming that your computer is a 64-bit machine or something like that. And most computers, like mine, is a 32. And so I downloaded the wrong thing and it wouldn't run. So make sure you, you just check on that. Um, <coughs> your, your, your worksheet here is going to walk you through some basic operations in MATLAB that, uh, that do vectors and vector addition and multiplication and stuff like that. Uh, by giving you uh, an example of, of things. So <coughs> uh, this is, for example, a way to create a vector. Uh, and uh, so the square brackets and then 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3 is a way to create a vector. And then uh, you can display your vector. If you want a range of numbers, uh, you would use the colon operator. And, uh, and stuff. So uh, you go through this on your own. At the end of all that discussion stuff, here are a list of questions for you to answer. And so when you answer it, I just want you to, uh, to type it in MATLAB. And once you think that that part of what you need to do is working fine, then you copy it and then paste it onto another file. Or if you want to do all this all at once, you can save this as a script uh, and save it as a text file and just send it to me. Okay, you will submit it online here. Um, so it should look something like this. When you click on this assignment, there is an add submission here. You can only submit one file. So after you have this collected, uh, you would say add submission, and then you would drop your file or you would look for it in your desktop or in your computer and then upload it. Okay? It's due a week from today. Uh, I usually make it to like 11.59, so if you don't have it done before class, you still have a little bit of a chance next week to complete it. So I stay up late. All right, so. No, I think it was due on September 21st, yeah. So, because, uh, let me ask, is, uh, is the book, does the bookstore have it now? Um, Not yet? Okay. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see. Uh, if you have the code, then just start working on stuff. Um, if you don't have it, then you, you know I'll probably I'll, I'll eventually need to set a deadline on when this is eventually going to be due, because I've been pushing it back because I've been waiting for the code. And I've been talking with the publishers about that stuff too. So uh, let's just say if you have it, then just make sure you you know we're we're on section 1.4 right now, and so you should have up to section 1.3 completed, uh, or try to get that done by the weekend. Okay. Um, I'll set the actual due dates later. For this, for the for the worksheet, yes, yeah. So copy and paste it onto a text file, and then that's what you're going to submit. All right. So this is uh, your free mat. This is how it would look like. 
And that's how you make a vector. Oh, I forgot to put commas. I guess it's okay if I don't put commas. It'll still do the same thing. Um, and then if I have another vector, um, u equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then I have these two vectors, and I can dot them. then I get the answer for the dot product and then um, we also were talking about uh, like adding vectors uh, but let's say we want to um, there's also a that 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 being in Z4 or Z5 or something like that, where we don't have more digits than, than this. So let's say we were in, in Z6. I guess this is a 6 here. Let's say we're in Z7. <laughs> so this is 3, 5, 7 doesn't fit in Z7 anymore. What's that? That should be a 0, Z7. 9 would be a 2, so that's remainder 2, right? And then 11 would be 4. So it turns out that uh, you can get the answer. Uh, the, the, the formal operation is called the modulus operation. So if you take that mod 7, you should get that uh, 0 for 7, 2 for 9, and 4 for 11, like you guys mentioned. So this is a nice quick way of, of finding the modulus of things. Uh, the MOD is, stands for modulus, and that's, that's the, if you're staying in Z, whatever. So let's say this was my worksheet, and then I'm done with it, so I could just copy this and save it onto a file, and then that's what you're going to upload. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so maybe we'll come back to this. Uh, but the thing I wanted to do was do some examples of some application problems. So there's some physics applications that they have in the book. I can talk a little bit about them, but oh, you know what? Maybe we should do some homework. Oh, what the answers are there. <laughs> it might change. Yeah, I'm recording, so okay, let's uh let's do one let's do this one as an example of uh, an application of vectors. So uh, a tow truck is towing a car, the tension in the tow cable is uh, is uh, 1400 newtons and the cable makes a 45 degree angle with the horizontal as shown in the figure below. What's the vertical force that tends to lift the car off the ground? So it looks like what we have here is a uh, is a graph or if, if I if I break this down a little bit into into the vectors that are involved Just 
there's no arrow for the bottom one. So this is the picture that we need. And it says that the tension in the tow cable is uh, 1,400 newtons. So this, this is uh, the length of this vector. Let's call this vector, uh, let's call it V. Uh, not V itself, but the, the magnitude of this is going to be 1,400 newtons. <coughs> And the cable makes a 45 degree angle with the horizontal as shown. Uh, what is the vertical force that tends uh, to lift the car off the ground? So this is, this is what we're looking for right here. And it's a vertical force, so we know that it's not going to have a, um, an X component. It just has a Y component, so we can just submit a scalar for our response for our answer. And so what we can do is we can just... Um, no, we can really just use a Pythagorean theorem here and be done with this, right? Uh, especially if this is 45 degrees, then that, that makes things a lot easier. Uh, we can use trig and do the sine business, sine cosine business. Uh, but I think uh, what we can try to do is you can think about the vector here. I express this vector V. write V with components. And that'll give you the X component and the Y component. And uh, to get the X component and the Y component, you basically will have to use trig. And to take a look at this opposite, uh, the adjacent side is your X component, right? So X component. Uh, using trig, uh, you have the adjacent and the hypotenuse sides. So we can say that uh, the, s the s what's adjacent? Is that sine or cosine? Cosine. So cosine of 45 degrees is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse x over 1400. And then you can solve for x here. x is equal to 1,400 times cosine of 45 degrees. And then whatever that is is going to be your x-axis. And so since this is a 45, 45, 90 degree angle triangle, and then we know that the other side is going to be the same. But let's work it out anyways. Uh, so the y component, which is what you're looking for, is uh, looking at the opposite side, which is the sine, sine of the 45 degree angle is equal to uh, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. And so y is equal to 1400 sine of 45 degrees. So that looks like it's going to be your answer. Um, and if we take the sine of 45 degrees, I think that's root 2 over 2. And that turns out to be 700 root 2, which is what we saw in the answer. OK? So that, was, that wasn't too bad. That was almost fun. Except it's physics, so it's not, not so fun. <coughs> All right, let's uh, let's try another one. For this one, I'm going to go to the book since uh, I don't know if the the homework has enough information about that. Uh, a couple of homework problems discuss things like. Um, Sending codes. And it's called an error detecting code. So the idea is that you send a code, and then 
they're going to send you one bit back, either a zero or a one, depending on whether the code looks like it might be correct or not correct. So, um, parity check is what it's called. <coughs> and really, what you what you have to do is uh, is is just it's really easy. You just add up the numbers and then try to figure out if it's odd or even. So if it's even, then it's a zero. If it's odd, then it's a one. And so that's how you would check the, the code. And so, but in, in terms of vectors, they think about it as as dotting it with a one, with a one vector where everything's a one. I don't know. That doesn't seem very interesting. So when we're talking about binary coding, we're in what's called Z2, right? Uh, you remember the other name for that? <laughs> GF2, right? Galois field that has two things. So we know that we're only dealing with zeros and ones. And uh, let's say the code had uh, like four bits to it. So Let's say Z to um, four. So, and let's 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 pick a code. Our vector is going to be zero one one zero. So when we do a parity check on this, what we're going to do is we're technically we're going to dot this with with uh, one. I mean, really, you just add them up, right? And then you figure out if your sum is odd or even. But uh, the the check is to dot it with a one vector, and I'll call this a, a one vector with an arrow, one with an arrow on top of it to be one 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 in Z two four. And so when you dot this. Zero one one zero, you're gonna get uh, so one times zero is zero, one times one is one. Um, <coughs> one and then zero. So we add them up, we get two, but this is going to be zero in in uh, Z two. So we have uh, a good a good check here. This is this is good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so that was easy. So something more interesting is that if we're not in Z two, let's let's go somewhere else, like maybe in Z five or something. We could do the same sort of parity check to figure out uh, what our last digit is going to be. And a lot of times when we do, when we send messages, we want to send messages so that when we do the parity check, it's going to be zero. Okay, so let's see how it turns out over here. Um, let's say, let's stay with four dimensions. And let's come up with an example. I'm going to call it V this time. Um, so give me an example of a vector in Z5. What? Nine two, six two. So that's not a good example because. So I want to be in. I want four elements. 
and I can only use numbers between 0 and 1 less than 5, right? So let's change a couple of these. So three, four, three, two, four, two. And if we do the same parity check with the one vector, where we would add them up, right? So essentially, we're just going to add them up. And so uh, when we do this dot product, we're really just adding up these things because we're multiplying everything by one, right? So this is just a three plus two plus four plus two. And we want to bring this down to, to Z5. So I got five, 11, is that right? So that should be what? So this is one, five, five. So your parry check returned a 1, which means that uh, there must have been some error somewhere. Uh, we should have returned a 0. So that's how we can do uh, a parity check. Or our check digit tells us what we get. OK? Uh, this is like, the purpose of this would be a beginning of a more complicated checking and security system and this is a simple case where you're just checking if it's a it's a valid entry or not a valid entry. So this is then on letters, since the number of those letters. Yeah. So then that's just as long as it gets a zero then that must be a problem. Yeah. Then it's not somebody's trying to send you a spam something. Okay. Um so that's, uh, that's uh, one application or another application for vectors. Uh, another interesting one is uh, it's, it's in the book. It's called the, the what's it called, UPC? UPC code, UPC? You know what that is? Yeah, barcode on products. Do you guys have anything that has a UPC on it? Book, your notebook, yeah. Yeah, notebooks would have them if you just bought them if you didn't tear out the thing. I was looking at my uh, my sunflower seeds. <laughs> what? Phone what? Battery. Phone battery. They they have UPC codes on them. So uh, so I found this. This is an interesting application. Uh, the UPC code, and what they do is they they uh, they send this. Um, this check vector, and the check vector is a uh, three one three one three one three one three one <laughs> whatever. <laughs> There's two more. Anyways. So this, again, this is another check. So this is a, a beginning of processing something. So uh, it would check it to make sure it's reading it correctly. And if, it's, and if for some reason the check didn't work out, then, then there's something wrong. So um, so they, they're going into mod uh, 10 here. So we can only use digits between 0 and 9. Right, so this is in Z10, and there's 11. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's an 11 vector, which means it has 11 components. And then what they do is they throw in a, another vector. Uh, not another vector, but another scalar as part of the check to see if that's, uh, that's really working out and that's really happening correctly. Did you count how many vectors, how many elements this was? How many is this, 10? 12? No? 
verse 12. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the idea behind this is that uh, you have this vector that you would dot with this check vector, and then if you get the correct D at the end, then then you scanned it correctly, and then you can proceed with whatever else you need to do. Um, so, um, whoever has those barcodes in your notebooks, can you show me how it looks like? Or tell me about it. Are there 11, 12 digits in there? 13? 12. So what's the first digit? Zero? So you got seven for the first digit? A lot of times it's zero. What's the last digit? Oh, it's all, it's all different now. Huh? Okay. So the idea is that you would dot this, and if all the digits worked out correctly, then it would be fine. It turns out that that last digit, where it's all different, is the digit, digit check, D. <laughs> what? So <laughs> that means that's, that's what's going to check whether it was scanned correctly or not scanned correctly. OK? So uh, let's, um, let's take an example. Uh, can somebody read off your digits? Anybody? All right. Oh wait, you, you're the one with a seven in front, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Uh, <laughs> so this is your this 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 digit and this digit were outside, right? And then so this is kind of 10 digit that's cut in half. And then so that's how the, the UPC code looks like. <coughs> so it turns out that this is your check digit D. And what we want to do is we want to know what this is. Or, or the computer, when it reads your digit, it's, it's, it's going to assume that we don't know this, but we're going to try to figure out what that is. So that's, that's kind of like the game, is try to figure out what this digit is. And so we're going to dot it with this check vector. Let's call this check vector, uh, uh, they call it C, so let's call it C. C, and let's dot that with the V vector that you have here. And for now, let's assume that we don't know this number 4. Okay? So that would be a 3 times 0 plus 7 times 1 plus 5 times 0. Wait. <laughs> 3 times 5. I'm getting mixed up here. Plus 1 times 7. Five. Oh, one, point, 1 times 5. Oh, this is too confusing. <laughs> okay, should I keep going? Yeah. Okay, three times four. Oh, now I ran over the D. Am I done yet? Okay, so plus one times D. So this is the D that you're going to be looking for. <coughs> All right, now, uh, um, yeah, go ahead, do it. Uh, so, yeah, seven. Okay, so we want this to be equal to zero, right? 
All right, now, did anybody put it in a calculator? You guys are going to really do it in your head? 76 plus D. 76 plus D. Right? So this is mod 10. We're in Z10. So we, oh, the other thing is that we want this to eventually equal to 0. So if we were in mod 10, what would make this a perfect uh, divisible, per perfect divisor of whatever? Four, <laughs> right? So if this was four, this would be 80. And 80 is equal to, if we take it mod 10, it's going to be equal to zero. And so it is, in fact, four. Over here, yeah. The mod thing is just the and, and then get the remainder. The remainder. Yeah, you want the remainder. Uh, in this case, you want the remainder to be zero. Okay. All right. That was a lot of work for this. <laughs> but that's 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 the idea with the UPS code, and so um, do you want to do more examples of this? Let's do it using uh, MATLAB or FreeMAT. <coughs> Let's see. Let's clear our console here. Can I clear? I can clear console. Clear console. I don't know how to clear console. Oh. Okay, so let's start off with a vector. Um, uh, let's go with that 11 digit vector. So, Brian? Okay, Ryan. So, uh, read that one that starts off with a 7, and I'm going to call this vector V equals, okay, go ahead. 7, 4. One, zero, zero, three, three. Don't tell me the last one, okay? One, one, six. six. Okay. And then the last one is what we need to check. <laughs> All right. Hopefully it's five, right? When we do it. So this is good. this is going to be my vector v. And then uh, we're going to uh, have our check vector, which starts off with a three, right? Three, one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then the twelfth one is going to get dotted with a D. So I'll leave that one blank for now, or I'll not include that one. So this is just an eleven vector. I'm going to dot it with an eleven vector, and I'm going to try to. Let's try to figure out that, that last one. Um, so really what we want to do is we want to dot this. So dot uh, C and V. And then we want to mod this, right? Mod 10 so that we can get the... And then we get 5, and we have to do that one more step where we have to subtract it. But since 5 and 5 are, is equal to 0, um, then we're done with this. That was fun. Yeah, we need to subtract it. Who doesn't have a 5 on their last di digit? Let's do another one. Okay, read it. Zero, nine, six, six, one, nine, seven, five, six, eight, zero. 
and that has uh, 11. So by the way, another another useful function, and um, I think I was talking about the magnitude and wanting to call it magnitude because in some programs, the length, the idea of the length is different. So in this case, the length is actually how many vectors, there, how many elements in the vector there are. So in this case, the length is 11. But if you were to find the magnitude, that's, that's a different number. All right, so this has uh, 11 digits where we have our check vector also has 11. So let's uh, take the dot product of those two. So C and W. Oh, I didn't mod it. So this is 97. So what should our D equal to? Should equal a three, right? So that's what makes it. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can actually write a program for this where we can have it end in uh, by giving the the last digit of your your U UPC. Is that what it's called? UPC. So um, yeah, we'll do that later. Any questions about this? So you could do this by hand, or if you get a good feel for being able to use a program like this, you can certainly use programs while you're doing your, your homework. All right. That was fun. Anything else? Systems. So we're on to the next chapter already, which is what we're supposed to talk about today. <laughs> we're a lecture behind. Um, so let, let's get some introductions to uh, systems of linear equations. So let's let's go ahead and jump to chapter chapter two. So your first quiz, <laughs> your quiz was, uh, was on systems of linear equation, but uh, that one was uh, something that you've seen before um, in, in algebra, which is just uh, a, two, a system of uh, two equations and two unknowns. And so uh, in general, you can have as many equations and as many unknowns as you want. And as a matter of fact, they don't have to have the same number of, uh, you don't have to have the same number of unknowns, the same number of equations. Uh, just, just any system will do. So they start off here by defining a linear equation. And if you look at this, this should be kind of similar to linear combination that we, we saw a while ago. And a linear equation uh, and, and the variables are given here as x1, x2, dot, 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 up to xn. Uh, in, in our two-dimensional case, uh, the variables are x and y. In three dimensions, it's x, y, z. Uh, so if we want more dimensions than that, we're kind of at the end of the alphabet already. And so we, we go back to x1 and just calling it x1, x2, x3, x4, up to however many we want. So that's just the notation. Um, and if we multiply each of those variables by a scalar, uh, a number, a constant, uh, we have what, what we call a linear equation. So a linear equation is basically a linear combination of things. So the important thing here is that the xi's are are not put into any mathematical function like the square function or a cube function. You're not taking the cube of any of those variables. It's just plain whatever that variable is.
<laughs> Are you guys getting used to my writing yet? Sometimes I look at it and say, wow, even I can't read it. Uh, so the xi's are not put into, uh, into some random mathematical function. Uh, so that makes it linear. That's, that's what makes it linear. Okay. If you square it, then it's, if you square the x's, then it's not linear anymore. Or if you put the x, if you put like x2 into the sine function, then it's not linear anymore. Okay. So that's what makes it linear. Turns out that linear things are the easiest things to work with, but not so practical. Well, they become practical. It's not how things are usually modeled, but in terms of analyzing things, we, we tend to bring it back to a, a, a linear approximation of things. So uh, the next definition is a solution to a linear equation. this to be on the same page, sorry. <clears throat> the solution to a linear equation is a vector, uh, you know, vector that would satisfy this equation. All right? So does this seem too abstract with the ends and stuff? Well, well let's see if we can bring it down to uh, a simple example. We'll carry our simple example. Let's say x plus 3. Let's, let's use, instead of x's and y's, which is what I was going to do, let's use x1 and x2. <clears throat> so let's say this is my... Um, my linear equation. This is linear, right? Okay. What is an example of a solution for this linear equation? So a solution could be what? Seven zero. Did you say something else, Maria? What'd you say? Seems like there could be more than one solution, right? Does that make sense? Yes. These are just going to be points on the line, and how many points are there in the line? There's an infinite number of points, so really, you can have an infinite number of solutions here. If you square the x1, for example, then it's not linear anymore. Multiplying, Multiplying by a coefficient and adding another variable, that's fine. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, as a solution or even as a coefficient over here, you can have negatives there as well. Yeah, you can have negatives. Unless you're dealing with z5 or something where you can only have a, those four and five numbers. All right? So they're just being, uh, you know, this, this might seem really obvious to us, but they're just being really uh, methodical with their definitions. So now, a system is a finite set of linear equations in which they have the same variables. And some equations may not have all the variables that are involved. So in this case, we can have a, a, a finite set of linear equations. So um, x1 plus 3x2 equals 7. And then if I have another one, uh, minus 4x1 plus x2 is equal to 0. And maybe a third one. Uh, 7x1 uh, minus 3x2 is equal to 4. 
then I have what's called a system of linear equations. So a solution for this should be a vector x and since there's two variables they need to have two components your x1 component and your x2 component uh, a vector x that would satisfy all of these lines or all of these uh, equations so solving for this would require a little bit more work and there might be some cases where Jeff taking that might be some cases where you, you don't have a solution and that that could be the case and so that's the kind of stuff that we're going to explore and we're going to use tools like matrices to to dive into that okay all right so that should be uh, it for today next time we'll pick up more on these systems and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about solving for these systems.